fellow Toastmasters, wonderful guests, will be the first one joining. No pressure. <laughs> Over the years, I have interviewed literally hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. Now, as part of my business, I help other companies find employees and help weed them out. And over the years, there are four things that I've found that are very, very super important when you're doing interviewing. And these help you define and find great employees who stay and who contribute to the company. Now, one of the first things is when you get resumes, one of the things to look out for is acronyms. Why? Because they've done studies in that 46% of people that apply for a job lie on their resume. That's rather shocking, but it's true. One of the things they found that a lot of people lie about are skills. And I'll give you some of the resumes that I personally received for people looking for a job with my company. The Can Spam Act, which for people that don't know it, is regulation regarding email. So it's regarding soliciting business emails, sending out emails to companies. So I received a resume last month that said, I've used the program Can Spam for many years while doing email marketing for my company. Can Spam is not a program. Sorry, that's not going to snow me. Here's another one, RSS, Real Simple Syndication. RSS is they enable publishers to syndicate data automatically. Here's one I received yesterday. I've set up our company's RSS to automatically populate to every social media program. RSS feeds don't work that way. But for people that are not familiar with terms like that, they wouldn't know it sounds good. Here's another one, SERP, Search Engine Results Page. I got this one last year, but I saved it lovely. I can help businesses use SERP to get to page one on Google. And again, things like that don't work that way. I've seen a lot of acronyms used where people put it on their resumes, but they don't have the skills. And when you interview them, if they put acronyms on the resume that you're not familiar with, look them up and find out what they are and ask them specifically about those topics. That is key because you will find out right off if they're fitting. Second is research. And this is a great word, technophobia is perfect for this because this is where a lot of employees fall short. They may not feel that much, they, they may not feel that comfortable searching for things on a computer, but the number one thing to do when you have someone to apply for a job is research them. And it's very easy to get information on people online on Google. Even people that think they don't have any information out there, they do. I found information on people that are like, oh no, you can't find me. Well, if you're you, if you want to Google, you're the soccer coach. How would you find that? Well, you were in the paper, it's all online. So the best way to research people is put their name into Google and put it into quotes. And then put in things like Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook, Put in the place where they've worked before. Put in the place where they're living. So they live in Hartford, Connecticut. So Tom Jones, in quotations, Hartford, Connecticut. You'd be amazed what kind of information people bring up. And again, unfortunately, this goes back to where people lie. Because I've gotten resumes from people, and they say, I worked at X company from 2003 to 2007 but you look them up on LinkedIn and they only worked for the company for six months. That's a bit of a little bit of a discrepancy. But that kind of information, many employers don't dig for. Recruiters, on the other hand, they do dig for that. And that's important. Now I'll talk about some of the ways that it helps to be positive in terms of this. When you're calling for references, I love this acronym. Instead of what would Jesus do? Would you hire them back? That's key. Because if they give a company as a reference, normally you call the company and you would say, do they do a good job? 
job for you? What did they do for you? Do you think they're a good employee? But it's key if you ask them, would you hire them back? They actually have to think about this and then give you an honest question and answer about it. Because if they wouldn't hire them back, why? You may not be allowed to necessarily ask why, but even if they hesitate in there, the fact that they're hesitating should give you pause to think. Now the last one is to tag team. And this is actually something that I wish we could do with Toastmasters, and maybe we could practice it. When you interview someone, try to have two people interviewing. Because just like Toastmasters, when you have an evaluator, you sometimes miss a lot of the speech because you're writing. When you're interviewing someone, if you have someone asking the questions and you have eye contact with that interviewee, you can see their reactions. And if you have someone else writing down their answers, then you're having that double hearing and also the visual. One of the things that you can help do, especially when you tag team, and ask the interviewee in advance if it's okay, is to tape them. Especially if you have a lot of people interviewing for a job. Do make sure that you ask them in advance, but when you tag team them as well, you can also play good cop, bad cop. So think of a couple of questions that you're gonna ask in advance that might throw a potential interviewee off. And switch them around, so you're the good cop, you're asking one of the primary questions, and all of a sudden, your bad cop jumps in and hits them with a pointed question. If you get to see their reaction from someone else asking questions, again, it can give you some additional feedback into, is this going to be a good long-term employee or not? So those are my four keys to doing a great interview. I have a lot more tips, but those are essential to that. And I hope if you do find yourself interviewing people now or in the future, you will take into account a couple of these, and I hope they've been helpful. Thank you. In front of you are a little bit different than what we use, but Heather has provided, so excuse the speech weavers on the top, but they're a little